Moving on to uh, our science uh, segment with uh, Julia Seeger. Uh, we're talking about methane, which is relatively unknown uh, as a gas to the general public, at least. And it's taking center stage at COP28. Uh, it's elimination relatively straightforward uh, in its process, and it could significantly save time in the race against uh, climate change. Methane not discussed as much as CO2 emissions, for example, uh, despite it being a gas that contributes heavily uh, to uh, global warming. Indeed. Uh, you know, if you have heard of methane, you tend to just associate it to cow belching and cow flatulation. But it is indeed uh, the second most important greenhouse gas to contribute to global warming after CO2. So it's not as prevalent uh, in the atmosphere, but it has a potential to uh, a global warming potential 30 times higher uh, than CO2. So you can see it here, methane in green and CO2 in uh, blue. Now, of the 580 million annual tons of methane that are emitted in the atmosphere, you have about half, let's say 40% of it that's directly linked to natural phenomenons and 60% to human activity. If we zoom in on human-induced methane, then one-third of it is actually released by the energy sector during uh, coal extraction, for instance, but also from leaks from uh, gas and oil drilling and pipelines. Now, the rest is actually due to agriculture and to cows, but also uh, to uh, rice paddies and uh, the decomposition of waste. Now, Kitavan, there's a lot of things we could do in all of these domains, of course, to reduce methane um, emissions, but there's actually one domain in which we can act swiftly and see uh, the results, and that's by addressing the leaks that I was just talking about, the leaks that appear uh, when we uh, drill for gas and along those major pipelines of oil companies in the world. And up till now, uh, there wasn't really a way to quantify uh, those methane leaks, but things have changed. That's right. We knew that there w we had those methane leaks, but we didn't know how important and what the extent of the problem was. And thanks to space technology and satellites specifically, we're now able to have more data. And that started in 2017 after ESA's launch of uh, the Copernicus Sentinel P5 satellite, which started scanning uh, the Earth to try to understand the quality uh, of the air. And that started giving more information to many startups. And last week, a French startup by the name of Kairos unveiled an interactive map where you can really track what we call the super emitters of methane from 2019 to today. And what it really shows is a correlation between those leaks and the pipelines. So for the first time now, you have those oil companies that really can't deny anymore what's happening and the extent of it. You also have NASA that's developed a high-tech uh, sensor that they installed on the International Space Station in, in 2022. And here it's quite uh, incredible. You have an incredible resolution. You can detect mega leaks. Uh, and it almost seems you're going to see it on this picture. It's a leak in uh, Texas. You're almost only 60 feet above ground, above this uh, this methane leak. And we are interested in this because it's easy, apparently, to reduce those uh, methane leaks. That's How right. is that possible? Well, according to the International Energy Agency, we could reduce 75% of those leaks thanks to uh, very inexpensive technologies. Today, we have leak detection systems. We also have repair equipment that is uh, propelled by AI that can also help. And so if you take 3% of the revenues accumulated by oil and gas companies worldwide, that would give enough money to be able to get rid of all of the methane. So of course, at COP28, uh, you have a lot. The US, for instance, has uh, unveiled a roadmap of how to reduce those emissions. You also have 50 major oil and gas companies who have really signed this charter to uh, bring down those uh, emissions to almost close to zero by 2030. But we've seen in the past, you know, some uh, similar promises. So we'll have to wait and see to see if they actually fall through this time. Julia Seeger with our science segment. Thanks so much.